Good evening. Good evening. So we can move to the questions. First question. So first question. If it is the angle between the acute angle between the diagonals of a cube, then which one of the following is? Correct. And the options are option A, theta equal to 30 degree, option B, theta equal to 45 degree, option C, theta equal to, sorry, 2 cos theta equal to 1 and option D, 3 cos theta equal to 1. So, you are asked to find the acute angle between the diagonals of a cube. we construct a cube from origin then the diagonals of the cube are OA and BC the vertex coordinates of O is 0 0 0 A is A A A B is 0 0 A and C is A A 0 this is the general coordinates of the vertices uh, diagonals of a vertices of the diagonals of a common O is equal to the origin 0, 0, 0, A equal to A, 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 B equal to 0, 0, A and C equal to A, A, A where A denotes the length of the edges of the cube. So, we know that vector A dot B is equal to A, B for theta. Since a cube is a three dimensional figure, you can find O, A vector and BC vector where OA and BC are the two diagonals of the cube. So A vector is equal to A minus 0 I cap plus A minus 0 J cap plus A minus 0 K cap. BC is A minus 0 I cap plus A minus 0 J cap plus 0 minus a k cap. So OA vector is equal to a i cap plus a j cap plus a k cap. BC vector is equal to a i cap plus a j cap minus 0 minus a is minus a minus a k So to find vector OA dot vector BC is equal to A dot B is defined as AB cos theta. So mod A mod BC cos theta was theta is the angle between OA and BC. So according to the definition of dot product A vector dot B vector is defined as A1 A2 plus B1 B2 plus C1 C2 that is a i cap plus a j cap plus a k cap dot a i cap plus a j cap minus a k cap is equal to modulus of o a. Modulus of o a is or magnitude of o a is equal to root of a square plus a square plus a square into modulus or uh, magnitude of b c is a square plus a square plus minus a the all square cos theta. So a dot b is equal to a1 a2 that is a into a is a square plus b1 b2 a into a is a square plus c1 c2 that is a into minus a is minus a square is equal to 
root of a square plus a square plus a square is root of b a square into root of a square plus a square plus minus a the whole square is again a square so root of a square plus a square plus a square is root of 3 a square cos theta a square is equal to root 3 a into root 3 a cos theta root of 3 a square is root 3 a so a square is equal to root 3 into 3 is 3 a square cos theta so 1 is equal to 3 cos theta the correct answer is 3 cos theta is equal to 1 option d 3 cos theta is equal to 1 option d So here theta is an acute angle, therefore 3 cos theta is equal to 1. Here we use the properties of vector, dot product and we have to know how to find the magnitude of a vector. Magnitude of a vector is defined as root of the coefficients of i, j and t. The correct answer is 3 cos theta equal to 1 option d. Now we can move to the next question. Correct option is option D, 3 cos theta equal to 1. So now we can move to the next question. What is the degree of the following differential equation? So next question, what is the degree of the following differential equation? x equal to root of 1 plus d square y by dx square. Option A is 1, option B is 2, option 3 is, option C is 3 and option D is degree is not defined. Before finding the degree, the equation is not in the standard form because root of 1 plus d square y by dx square means root of, root of a number can be written as number raised to 1 by 2. So here in place of number you have 1 plus d square y by dx square. So x is equal to 1 plus d square y by dx square the whole raised to 1 by 2. So root of written as 1 by 2. But before finding the degree or order, you have to convert the equation in, in the standard form where the powers are to be in whole numbers. Here the power is a fraction that is 1 by 2. So to change that into a whole number, we are squaring both sides. So on squaring both sides, x square is equal to 1 plus d square y by x square. 1 by 2 the whole square is 1. So now the equation of x square is equal to 1 plus d square y by dx square which is in standard form. So the degree is degree is defined as the power of the highest order derivative. We are the highest order derivative is second order. So the order is 2 but the question is to find the degree. So the degree is the power of the highest order. That is power of the highest order is 1. So degree is 1. x square is equal to 1 plus d square y by dx square. The whole raised to 1. So the degree is 1. If you are asked to find the order then order is defined as the highest derivative, order of the highest derivative. Here the order is 2 but the question is to find the degree. So degree is 1. 
Tres, uno. Option A. Now next question, variance sigma square of a random variable x is given by option A, expectation E of x square means expectation of x square. Then option B is expectation of x, the whole square. Option C, expectation of x square minus expectation of x, the whole square. Option D, expectation of x square plus expectation of x, the whole square. Variance is defined as expectation of x square minus expectation of x, the false square. This is the standard formula of variance. Just by heart, this formula is the formula of variance of a random variable x. x is a random variable and sigma square denotes the expectation and sigma denotes the standard deviation. Sorry, sigma square denotes the variance and sigma denotes the standard deviation. So, variance is equal to expectation of x square minus expectation of x the whole square, but expectation of x means mean of the random variable. Okay, sigma square is equal to expectation of x square minus expectation of x the whole square. Option C. Now, next question, fourth question. What the interval over which the function f of x equal to 6x minus x square, where x greater than 0 is increasing? Option A, open interval 0, 3. Option B, open interval 3, 6. Option C, open interval 6, 9. And option D, none of the above. Here the question is to find the interval over which the function is increasing. So we know that to check whether the function is increasing or decreasing, we have to find the first derivative. So first derivative is f dash of x is equal to 6 minus derivative of 6x is 6 minus derivative of x square is 2x. So in order to find the critical point, we can equate this equation. First derivative to 0, that is f dash of x is equal to 0, implies 6 minus 2x is equal to 0, or 2x is equal to 6, or x equal to 3. So, the value of x is equal to 3.
So now we can divide the whole real line into intervals. So complete R is divided in R means real line minus infinity to T, T to infinity. So then now when you go through the options, you can see that the intervals are of the form. The first option is 0, 3, second is 3, 6 and 6, 9. So in the interval minus infinity to 3, the function is to check whether the function is increasing or decreasing, take a point from this interval. We can take 2, 2 is a point in this interval. Substitute this 2 in this f dash of x. Substitute this 2 in equation 1. So equation 1 implies f dash of 2 is equal to 6 minus Two into two, that is six minus four, which is equal to two, greater than zero. So in this interval, the function is the derivative is greater than zero. Greater than zero means the function is increasing. The derivative at that point is greater than zero, then the function is increasing. And if the derivative at that point is less than zero, then the function is decreasing. So here the function is. In the interval minus infinity to 3, the function increasing. Because the derivative is, when you put x is equal to 2 at the derivative f dash of x, you can see that the value is 2, that is, it is greater than 0. So, it is increasing. So, now you take another point from the second interval. The second interval is 3 infinity. 3 infinity, you can take a point 4. So, from equation 1, f dash of 4 is equal to 6 minus 2 into 4, which is equal to 6 minus 8, which is equal to minus 2. Minus 2 is less than 0. So, from the second interval, our second interval is 3 infinity. From the second interval, I take the point 4 and find f dash of 4. And f dash of 4 is negative 2, that is less than 0. Since the derivative at in this interval is less than 0, the other function is decreasing. So, in the first interval, the function is increasing. In the second interval, the function is decreasing. So, our question is to find the interval over which the function is increasing. So, go through the options. You know that first option 0, 3 is contained in the interval minus infinity. Three. 0, 3 is a subset of in open interval minus infinity 3. So the correct answer is option A. 3, 6 and 6, 9. This, uh, B option and C options are contained in the decreasing interval. So we can delete that option. The correct option is option A. So 0, 3 is contained in the interval minus infinity 3. Correct answer is option A. question is if a n where a denotes any positive integer is equal to just define a set of all a n such that x element of n where capital n denotes natural number then 2 n intersection pi n is so we know that a n is defined as set of all a x that x element of n So 2n denotes set of all 
2x such that x element of natural number. So natural number starts from 1. So when x equal to 1, 2 into 1 is 2. When x equal to 2, it is 2 into 4. Next term is element is 6, 8, etc. So 2n denotes the set of all multiples of 2 or even numbers. Set of all even numbers. Now 5n. 5n means set of all 5n says that x element of n. Here also 5n is equal to set of all x, x is an element of set of all natural numbers. So x takes the value 1, 2, 3 etc. So when x equal to 1, 5 into 1 is 5. When x equal to 2, 5 into 2 is 10. Next equal to 3, 5 into 3 is 15, etc. You are asked to find 2n intersection 5n. What is 2n intersection 5n? 2n intersection 5n means Intersection means elements common in both the sets. Here the first set is 2 and that is set of all even number. And second set is set of all multiples of 5. So intersection is first common element will be 10, next is 20, next will be 30, etc. That is even multiples of 5. But 10, 20, 30, etc. denotes the set 10n. 10n means set of all Multiples of 10. So the set 2n intersection 5n is equal to set of all 10, 20, 10, 20, 30, etc. Which is 10n. So option A. Option A is the correct answer. Next, what is the general solution of 1 plus e raised to x while d by is equal to e raised to x dx plus d is the constant of integration. Option A is y square is equal to log ln denotes natural logarithm log c square into e, e raised to x plus 1 the whole square. Option B, y is equal to log c into e raised to x plus 1, option c y square is equal to log c into e raised to x plus 1 and option d none of the above. So we have to solve this, find the general solution of this equation. Here the equation is 1 plus e raised to x into y dy is equal to e raised to x dx. Whenever you are asked to find the solution of an equation, you have to check whether the equation is in variable separable form. That's the first step. First step is to check whether the equation is variable separable. That is, you have to check whether we can separate the variable x and y in both the sides. So here, you can keep y dy here and bring this 1 plus e raised to x to the arches. That is e raised to x by 1 plus e raised to x dx. So y dy is equal to e raised to x by 1 plus e raised to x dx. So now you can see that the equations are in variable separable form. y is with dy and the function of x is with dx. This is in variable separable form. So to find the solution, integrate this. Integral of y dy is integral of y is y square by 2, which is equal to 
integral of e raised to x by 1 plus e raised to x. You have to find the integral of the function e raised to x by 1 plus e raised to x. So, the simplest method is you know that the derivative of 1 plus e raised to x, that is the derivative of denominator is the numerator. So, if you put 1 plus e raised to x is equal to t, whenever you put the substitution, you have to take the derivative. Derivative of 1 is 0 plus derivative of e raised to x is e raised to x is equal to derivative of t is with respect to x is dt by dx. So, e raised to x dx is equal to dt. So, integral of we can replace this e raised to x dx by dt by 1 plus e raised to x by t. So, y square by 2 is equal to integral of dt by t is log t plus c constant. For constant, here I am using log c. Log c is also a constant. So, you can take log c in place of c. c ki power and log c italian pattern will so, y square by 2 is equal to log t plus log c. Or y square is equal to 2 log t plus 2 log c. Y square is equal to a log, sorry, m log, a can be written as log m a raised to m. So, log t square plus 2 log c can be written as log c square property used is m log a. m log a is same as log a raised to m. So, 2 log t is equal to log t square. ln denotes natural logarithm. L log g denotes common logarithm. Natural logarithm means the base is e. So, ln t square plus L log c square ln denotes natural logarithm. So, y square is equal to log a plus b is equal to log a into b. So, y square is equal to log. You can replace this t by the correct function. The correct function is 1 plus e raised to x. The whole square into b square. So, y square is equal to log 1 plus e raised to x. The whole square plus b square. Option. is equal to log 1 plus e raised to x the whole square into c square. That's the solution of the given equation. This y square is equal to log c square plus e square into e raised to x plus 1 the whole square. Property uses log a plus log b is equal to log a b and also remember this property log a minus log b is equal to log a by and this is option a Next question, let f be a continuous, let f be continuous on closed interval 1, 5 and differentiable in open interval 1, 5 and if f of 1 is equal to minus 3 and f dash of x is greater than or equal to 9 for all x element of 1, open interval 1, 5 then which of the following is correct? Option A, f of 5 is greater than or equal to 33, option B, f of 5 is greater than 3. Option C, F of 5 is less than or equal to 33 and option D is none of the F of 5. So here, you have to apply the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem says that if f of x is 
continuous on closed AB and differentiable in open AB then there exists the element of open AB is that f dash of c is equal to f of b minus f of a by b minus b. Dash of c equal to f of b minus f of a by b minus b. If you look at the statement of mean value theorem, you have to update this theorem. So this question here, the function is continuous of closed interval 1 pi and differential relay open interval 1 pi. That's the first two conditions of the mean value theorem is satisfied. And an extra condition is f of a not equal to f of b. Here f of a is, here a is 1. So f of a is, that is f of 1 is equal to minus 3. b is 5. f of 5 is not given. And applying mean value theorem f dash of c c be any point or you can write f in place of c f dash of x is equal to f of b f of b means f of 5 minus f of a by b minus a b minus a means 5 minus 1 which is equal to f of 5 is unknown minus f of 1 is minus 3 by 5 minus 1 is 4 so f dash of x is equal to f of 5 plus 3 by 4. But it is also given the question that f dash of x is greater than or equal to 9. Our f dash of x is f of 5 plus 3 by 4. So substitute the value of f dash of x. f dash of x is f of 5 plus 3 by 4 greater than or equal to 9. This f dash of x is obtained by applying mean value theorem. So f dash of x is greater than or equal to 9. We can replace this f dash of x by f of 5 plus 3 by 4 greater than or equal to 9. So f of 5 plus 3 is greater than or equal to 4 to 9 is 36. f of 5 is greater than or equal to 36 minus 3 is 33. So f of 5 is greater than or equal to 33 is the correct option. f of 5 is greater than or equal to 33. That is option A. You can bring this 4 to the RHS. This 9 into 4 is 36. f of 5 plus 3 is equal greater than or equal to 36. Or f of 5 is greater than or equal to 36 minus 3 is 33. The correct option is option A. Next question. That f of x is equal to x plus x raised to minus 1. Then which of the following is correct? Option A is f of x has a maximum but not minimum. Option B, f of x has a maximum and a minimum and maximum of f of x is greater than minimum of f of x. Option C, f of x has a maximum and a minimum and maximum of f of x is less than minimum of f of x. Option D, f of x has a minimum but no maximum. So, 
you have to check the maxima and minima. So in order to check the maxima and minima, you have to find the first derivative. So f dash of x is derivative of x is 1 plus derivative of x raised to minus 1 means 1 by x. Derivative of 1 by x is minus 1 by x square. So f dash of x is equal to 1 plus minus 1 by x square. Next step is you have to find the critical points. To find the critical points, up to f dash of x equal to 0. That is 1 plus minus 1 by x square is equal to 0. So 1 is equal to 1 by x square implies x square is equal to 1 implies x is equal to the power minus 1. So x takes the values plus 1 and minus 1. So here the question is to check all the options are about maxima and minima. So you have to find the second derivative now. So if you are asked to find the maxima and minima, then find the first derivative, equate to 0 and find the critical points. After that, find the second derivative. So second derivative f double dash of x. So double dash of x means second derivative. So now to find the second derivative, differentiate the first derivative again. So on differentiating the first uh, derivative again, derivative of 1 is 0 plus derivative of minus 1 by x square is minus 1 by x square means x raised to minus 2. Derivative of x raised to minus 2 is derivative of x raised to n is x raised to n minus 1 by n minus 1. That is, sorry, derivative of x raised to n is n x raised to n minus 1. So, minus 2 x raised to minus 2 minus 1. It implies 2 x raised to minus 3 which is equal to 2 by x raised to minus 3 means 1 by x cube. So with the second derivative is 2 by x cube. Now find the second derivative at plus 1 and minus 1. At plus 1, second derivative is 2 by 1. 2 is equal to 2. That is greater than 0. And minus 1, second derivative is 2 by minus 1 whole cube. Minus 1 cube is minus 1. So 2 by minus 1 is minus 2 which is less than 0. So according to the condition of maxima and minima, if the der second derivative at that critical point is greater than 0, then the function will have a minima there. And if the second derivative at that point is less than 0, then the function will have a maxima. So here both the, sorry, here the function has both the minima and maxima. The first option is f of x has a maxima but no minima. This is not true. Second option is f of x has a maxima and a minima and maximum of f of x is greater than minimum of f of x. C, C, uh, the option C is f of x has a maxima and a minimum and maximum of f of x is less than minimum of f of x. The option D is f of x has a minimum but not maxima. So we can eliminate the last option also because after doing these steps we understood that right? so f of x has both maxima and minima. So now next step is you have to find the find which value is greater that is maximum of f of x or minimum of f of x. So first you have to find maximum of f of x. Maximum is obtained at minus 1. So to find the maximum of f of x find f of minus 1. So f of minus 1 is minus 1 plus Minus 1 raised to minus, uh, minus 1 means 1 by minus 1. So, it is equal to minus 1 plus minus 1 is minus 2. So, maximum of f of x is equal to minus 2. Now, minimum of f of x is obtained at 1. That is f of 1. f of 1 is 1 plus 1 by 1 which is equal to 3. So, maximum of f of x is minus 2 and minimum of f of x is 2. F double dash of plus 1 is a positive term. That means at 1 the function is occurring a minima and at minus 1 the function is occurring a maxima. So, f of minus 1 is equal to minus 2 and f of 1 is 2. That is the maximum of f of x is less than the minimum of f of x. Option C is the correct option.
Now, next question is, find the condition of K, so that the system of equations, x plus 3y equal to 5, and 2x plus ky equal to 8, has a unique solution. So, in order to find, in order to check the consistency of each, of an equation, you can use the, the ratios of the coefficients a1 by a2 not equal to b1 by b2 then the equations have unique solution and then a1 by a2 equal to b1 by b2 equal to c1 by c2 then the equations have infinite solution and then a1 by a2 equal to b1 by b2 not equal to z1 by z2, then the equation will have, equation will not possess any equation, that is no solution. So, these are the conditions of, solutions of equations. For unique solution and infinite solutions are, termed as consistent, and the no solution situation is termed as inconsistent. So, even if you are asked to check the consistency of two equations, use the same method, to use the take the ratios of the coefficients of x, y, and the constants. A1 denotes the coefficient of x, A2 denotes the coefficient of x in the second equation, B1 denotes the coefficient of y in the first equation, B2 denotes the coefficient of y in the second equation, C1 denotes the uh, constant in the first equation, and C2 denotes the constant in the second equation. So, here you have to find the value of k for which the system possesses a unique solution. So, the condition is A1 by A2 not equal to b1 by b2 that is a1 is 1 1 by 2 not equal to 3 by k and for cross multiplying k not equal to 6 the correct option is option b k not equal to 6 k not equal to 6 Next question, if, can question, if A is the singular matrix, then adjoint of A is option A singular, option B non-singular, option C symmetric and option D not defined. This is actually a question from the theory part. If A is the singular matrix, then adjoint of A is also a singular matrix. Correct option is option A. If A is the singular matrix, then adjoint of A is also Next question. This is also a direct question from the theory part. Function y equal to f of x has relative minima where option a is of f of x equal to 0 and f dash of x is less than 0. Option b f of x equal to 0 and f dash. f double dash of x is greater than 0 f of x equal to 0 and f dash of x is less than, greater than 0 and option d f dash of x is equal to 0 and f double dash of x is less than 0. Here the correct option is this direct question from the theory part option b f dash of x equal to 0 and f double dash of x is greater than 0. Because you are asked to find the relative minima. Minima is occurred when the second derivative is greater than 0. So the correct is option B.
So now next question. The number that exceeds its square by the greatest amount is. Option A minus 1, option B 0, option C 1 by 2 and option D 1. So that you can find minus 1 square, minus 1 square is equal to 1, 0 square is equal to 0, 1 by 2 square is equal to 1 by 4 and 1 square is equal to 1. The number is minus 1 and the square is 1. So the difference is so this is to find that number that exceeds its square by the greatest. Amount. The number has to exceed its square. So here minus 1 and 1, the number is does not exceed the square because minus 1 is less than 1. In 0, the both the square and the numbers are equal. Third option, number is 1 by 2 but the square is 1 by 4. That is the number exceeds its square. Okay, 1 by 2 is greater than 1 by 2. Take the case of 1, 1 square is equal to 1, that's the number and the square. So the correct option is option C, 1 by 2 is greater than 1 by 2. Next question, the length of the perpendicular drawn from the object to the plane. 2x minus 3y plus 6x and minus 42 is equal to 0 is option A 3, option B 4, option C 5 and option D 6. So here you are to uh, you are asked to find the length of the perpendicular drawn from the object. So the point is object. So object means coordinate is 0, 0, 0. And the equation of the plane is 2x minus 3y plus 6 is at minus 42 is equal to 0. So length of the perpendicular drawn from a point is given by the distance of a perpendicular drawn from a point is given by distance is equal to modulus of ax1 plus by1 plus cz1 plus d by root of a square plus b square plus c square this is equal to more here a means coefficient of x2 into x1 means the phase x coordinate of that point that is 0 plus b is minus 3 into y1 means y coordinate of that point that is 0 plus c is 6 into z1 means z coordinate of that point that is also 0 plus d, d means that constant here the constant is minus 42 y root of a square is 2 square plus minus 3 the whole square plus 6 square which is equal to not minus 42 by root of 4 plus 9 plus 36. 4 plus 36 40. 36, uh, 40 plus 9 is 49. So 42 by root 49. Root 49 is 7. 42 by 7 which is equal to 6. Correct answer is option D. 6 to
next question the line for direction ratios a plus b b plus c and c plus a then what is the sum of the squares of its direction for sign option a a plus b plus c the whole square option b 2 into a plus b plus c option c 3 and option b 1 Here the question is the sum of the squares of direction cosines. Direction cosines are generally denoted as L, M and N. Sum of the squares of its direction. Squares means L square plus M square plus N square. So, sir, you already know the formula that L square plus M square plus N square is always equal to 1. Whatever be the direction ratio the direction cosine sum of the squares of the direction cosine is always equal to 1. So, you can directly write the answer as 1. Instead of solving the, instead of finding L, M and N, you can directly write the answer as 1. Or you can solve the same by finding L, M and N. L is defined as direction ratio A by root of A square plus B square plus C square. M was denoted M is defined as B by root of A square plus B square plus C square and N, N is defined as C by root of A square plus B square plus C square where A, B, C are the direction ratios. Yeah. First direction ratio is A instead of A, the first direction ratio is A plus B, second ratio is B plus C and third ratio is C plus C. You can use the direction ratios to find the values of L, M and N and find the square and then add. Even if you do that method, uh, use that method, the final answer will be 1. So, don't waste the time, just apply the formula. The formula is L square plus N square plus N square is equal to 1. So, the correct answer is Direction ratios which is first sign can't be which is all we have done. You know, we can apply direct T formula and apply it on the answer is L square plus N square plus N square is equal to 1. Next, change the question. A solution of 100 liter contains 75 percentage water and rest liquid sugar. How much liquid sugar must be added to make 50 percent sugar solution? Total. Solution is 10 liter, 75 percentage water out of 100 liter, 75 percentage means 75 liter, 75 liter is water and the rest is liquid sugar, sugar, liquid sugar is 25 percent, that is 25 liter. So the ratio of water is to sugar is 75 is to 25 which is equal to 3 is to 1. The ratio of water is to liquid sugar is 3 is to 1. You have to, question is to how much liquid sugar must be added to make 50% sugar solution. 50% sugar solution means the ratio must be, ratio of water to the sugar solution must be 1 is to 1. So, here 1 represents 25 liter. This 1 is corresponding to the 25 liter. So, the ratio should be 1 means to 1. We, we are adding liquid sugar. So, the value of water will not change. Here, the value of water is 3. After adding the sugar solution also, liquid sugar also, the ratio of water will be 3. But we need the ratio 1 means to 1. So, if the water is 3, then the liquid sugar must also be 3. Then 3 is to 3, changes to 1 is to 1. So, 1 is to be converted into 3. 
this you have to add 1 corresponds to 25 you have to convert it into 3 that is you have to multiply this with 3 so 3 corresponds to 75 liter so initially this liquid sugar was 25 liter now it is 75 liter so the liquid sugar added is liquid sugar added is equal to 75 minus 25 which is equal to 50 liter the answer is option b 50 liter initially there were 100 liter out of which 75 percentage is water and the rest is liquid sugar 75 percentage of 100 means 75 liter and 25 percentage of uh, rest means 25 percentage 25 percentage means 25 percentage of 100 liter is 25 so 25 liter of sugar on taking the ratio it is 3 is to 1 so our 1 represents 25 liter and 3 represents 75 liter so you have to add liquid sugar so that the percentage is 50 that is ratio is 1 is to 1 50 percent sugar solution means plus 50 percentage is water this ratio is to be 1 is to 1 so you are adding water's uh, liquid sugar so the ratio or the number of uh, water will not change so initially it was 3 so after adding sugar solution the number remains as 3 so but the ratio must be 1 is to 1 so to convert this 1 to 3 you have to multiply it with 3 that is you have to add initially 1 represents 25 3 represents 75 so you have to add liquid sugar which is equivalent to 75 minus 25 which is equal to 50 liters so the correct answer is option D 50 liters So now next question f and g are differentiable functions in 0 open interval 0 1 satisfying f of 0 is equal to 2 g of 1 equal to g of 1 g of 0 equal to 0 and f of 1 equal to 6 then for some c element of 0 1 open interval 0 1 2 f dash of c is equal to g dash of c 2 f dash of c is equal to 3 g dash of c option 3 f dash of c is equal to g dash of c and option d f dash of c is equal to 2 g dash of c here also we have to apply the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem says that f dash of c is equal to f of b minus f of a by b minus a. Here a is equal to 0 b is equal to 1 f of a that is f of 0 is equal to 2 f of 1 is equal to 6 so f dash of c is equal to 6 minus f of b f of b means f of 1 f of 1 is 6 6 minus f of a f of a is 2 by b minus a that is 1 minus a which is equal to 6 minus 2 4 by 1 which is equal to 4 f dash of c is equal to 4 Now, let us say theorem for g dash, that is g dash of c is equal to g of b minus b of a by b minus a. So, g of b is g of 1, g of 1 is equal to g of a, that is g of 0 is equal to 0, a is 0 and b is 1. So, g dash of c is equal to g of b that is 2 minus b of a that is 0 by 1 minus 0 is equal to 2. So on comparing f dash of c and g dash of c you can see that f, f dash of c is twice g dash of c that is f dash of c is equal to twice g, g dash of c. f dash of c is 4 it is obtained when g dash of 
3 is multiplied by 2. So the correct option is option C. Sorry, option D. F dash of C is equal to 2 into G dash of C. Next question, the area, 18th question, the area of a triangle with vertices minus 3, 0, 3, 0 and 0, k is 9 square units, then what is the value of k? We are asked to find the value of k. Option A is 3, option B is 6, option B is 9 and option B is 12. Area of triangle is defined as Half into determinant of x1, y1, 1, x2, y2, 1, x3, y3. So here area is given as 9. So 9 is equal to half into determinant of minus 3, 0, 1, 3, 0, 1, 0, 3. Because 18 is equal to determinant of minus 3. Symbolize 18 is equal to minus 3 into 0 minus k plus minus 0 into that is 0 plus 1 into 3 into k minus 0, 3k minus 0. So 18 is equal to 3k plus 3k. K is equal to 18 or K is equal to 18 by 6 which is equal to that means option A. A is the correct answer. K takes the value 3. Remember this formula area of a triangle is half into determinant of x1, y1, 1, x2, y2, 1 and x3. One, where x1, y1, x2, y2 and x3, y3 are the three vertices of the triangle. And area of the parallelogram is equal to cross product of the adjacent sides. The vector equations of the sides of a triangle are given when area of triangle is equal to half into magnitude of AB cross AC. The equations of the two sides of the uh, triangles are given, then you can use this formula. If the vertices are given, then you can use this formula determines. The formula for vector is 1 by 2 into magnitude of AB cross AC. Next is find the perfect value of the sequence of payments of rupees 432 made at the end of each 5 months and continuing forever if money is worth 5 percentage more at the end of each 5 months. Option A 4,343,200 rupees 
option b rupees 14200 option c rupees 45000 and option d none of this so here the initial amount is rupees 432 continuing forever we have you can find the value for a forever data but you can find less than assumed value so the interest is five percentage compounded at the end of each five months that is five percentage means five by hundred so the period is five you can multiply the denominator by five that is one by hundred which is equal to zero point zero one so to find the present value of the sequence divide that amount by the interest that is rupees 432 by 0 0.01 which is equal to by finding a present value we can't find the continuing forever amount so the present value is 432 by 0 0.01 which is equal to 432 into 100 by 0 0.01 into 100 Correct answer is option A, rupees 43,200. Next question is, a cricket bat manufacturing firm access its variable force to be 2x times x minus 40 for exit the number of bats produced and also the force incurred on storage rupees 1200. And how many bats should be manufactured for the minimum total first? But the important point is minimum total first. Option A, 14 bats. Option B, 12 bats. Option C, 20 bats. And option D, 6 bats. So, if you have to, just to find minimum and maximum, so find the function here. A cricket bat manufacturing firm access its variable cost to 2x times x minus 40, where x is the number of bats. So, you have to minimize this cost. So, the function is this is a cost function, and the function is 2x into x minus 40. So, you have to check whether the and also the cost incurred and storage is rupees 1200. So, the additional charge is plus 1200. This is the cost of storage. So, total cost function is f of x equal to 2x into x minus 40 plus 1200. It is equal to 2x square minus 80x plus 1200. You have to minimize this. So, to find the minimum and maximum, you have to find the first derivative. First derivative is derivative of 2x square is 4x minus Derivative of 80x is 80. Now equate this into 0. This is 4x minus 80. This is done to find the critical point. So 4x minus 80 is equal to 0. Or 4x is equal to 80. Or x is equal to 20. 80 by 4 is 20. So the critical point is 20. Now our next step is to check whether the function is having a minimum at this critical point. For that find the second derivative. The second derivative is differentiate the first derivative again. Derivative of 4x is 4, which is greater than 0. The second derivative is greater than 0, then it is the minima. So this critical point 20 is the minima point or known as local minima. So then how many bats? You have to find the value of x. So value of x is 20. The minimum bats is to uh, uh, get a minimum total cost is you have to uh, manufacture 20 bags. That's the correct option. Option C.
Next is a continuous random variable x is distributed in the interval 0 to 10. The probability p x equal to 2 is. The important point is the variable is a continuous random variable and you are asked to find the probability at a point. So you are asked to find the probability at x equal to 2. The variable is a continuous random variable. So if the variable is a continuous random variable and if you are asked to find the probability at x equal to 2, then that is at a point, then the probability will be zero. Probability at a point for a continuous random variable is always equal to zero. So the correct option is option C. Question. Let K be the order of A mod N, then A B congruent to 1 mod N if and only if. Option A, K divides A, K divides B, K divides N, and option B, K divides 1. It is given that a b modulus 1 mod n. Now to find the necessary and sufficient condition to satisfy this assumption. So we are assuming that a b is on 21 mod n. Also we can assume that a k is congruent to 1 mod n. These are the assumptions. It is already given that k is the order of a mod n. So, AK is congruent to 1 mod N. Now, by division algorithm, B can be written as AQ plus R where 0 less than or equal to R less than or equal to B. R less than or equal to K. Where R is the remainder, Q is the portion, K is any number, B is the dividend. So we are using division algorithm to write B is equal to KQ plus R. Then AB is equal to A into KQ plus R is equal to AKQ plus AR. But we know that AB is congruent to 1 mod n, which implies AKQ plus AR is also congruent to 1 mod n, which implies, but AK is also congruent to 1 mod n, which implies AR is congruent to 1 mod n. Since AR is congruent to 1 mod n, R is equal to Zero. That is the remainder should be equal to 0. So when the remainder R is equal to 0, then B is equal to KQ plus 0 or KQ. That means B can be expressed as a multiple of K or you can write K divides B. The correct option is option B. K divides B. First, assume that AB is congruent to 1 more n. I also assume that AK is congruent to 1 more n. By division algorithm, we can write B as KQ plus R, where R is the remainder and 
half lies between 0 less than or equal to r less than or equal to k. Now, ab means a into, in place of b, you can write kq plus r, which is equal to a kq plus ar. But we know that ab is congruent to 1 more than, which implies a kq plus ar congruent to 1 more than. But ak is also congruent to 1 more than. Therefore, ar is also congruent to 1 more than. So, b is equal to, ar congruent to 1 more than means r is equal to 0. Or b is equal to kq plus 0, which is equal to k, that is k divides b. Next question is a statement question. 23rd question. Consider the following statement. First statement is the derivative where the function attains maximum or minima be 0. Second, if the function is differentiable at a point, then it must be continuous at that point. Which of the above statement is or are correct? Option A, only one. Option B, only two. Option C, both one and two. Option D, neither one, no. This is also a direct question from the theory part. In fact, the first statement, the first statement says that the derivative where the function attains maximum or minima B0. So, according to the definition, a function attain maxima if the derivative, second derivative is greater than attains minima if the second derivative is greater than 0 and maxima if uh, second derivative is less than if the derivative is equal to 0, that means that point is critical point. So, the first statement is not correct. First statement is not correct because the derivative attains 0 at the critical point. Sorry, first statement is the derivative where the function attains maximum minima is 0 is correct because when you equate the first derivative 0, you will get the critical point and the critical point is the point at which the function attains maximum or minima. So, the first, derivative, first statement is correct. The first derivative in a particular way, so the statement is correct. Second derivative and then the statement is wrong, but here the state. Derivative or the function attains maximum or minima is 0. Ah, that is correct because the function attains maximum or minima at a critical point. At every critical point, the derivative will be equal to 0. So, the first statement is correct. Now, the second statement, if a function is differentiable at a point, then it must be continuous at that point. That is also a correct statement because every differentiable function is continuous, but the reverse is not true. That is Every differentiable function is continuous, but every continuous function is not differentiable. So, the second statement is correct. That is, the function is differentiable at a point, then it must be continuous. That is a necessary condition. But the vice versa is not correct. That is, if a function is continuous, may not imply the function is differentiable. So, yeah, both the statements are correct. So, both one and The area of the region is for units bounded by the curve y equal to x and y is equal to x bar plus 2 for x element of minus 1 to 1. y equal to x is a 
straight line passing through object. y equal to x square plus 2 that is y minus 2 is equal to x square with a parabola where the vertex is zero parabola symmetric along by y axis with the vertex zero So you are asked to find the, so here the upper curve, there are two curves, that is f of x and g of x, f of x is equal to y equal to x, that is x and g of x is equal to x square by 2, x square plus 2, the upper curve is denoted by f of x and the lower curve is g of x. So area between two curves is defined as integral of a to b f of x minus g of x. Here the limit is from minus 1 to 1, so integral minus 1 to 1 f of x is x minus b of x is x square plus 2 is equal to integral of x square x square by 2 minus integral of x square is x cube by 3 minus minus of plus 2 is minus integral of 2 is 2 in the limits minus 1 to is equal to on applying the upper limit 1 by 2 minus 1 by 3 minus 2 upper limit minus of lower limit minus 1 square is 1 that is 1 by 2 minus minus 1 cube is minus 1 so plus 1 by 3 minus 2 into minus 1 is plus 2 now open, opening the brackets 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 get cancelled minus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 is minus 2 by 3 minus 2 minus 2 is minus 4 is equal to minus 2 minus 12 by 3 minus 14 by 3 since it's the area we take the modulus value that is 14 by 3. that is 14 by 3 option b by 3 upper limit. First you have to apply the upper limit. After that you have to apply the lower limit. Correct option is option B. 14 by Next question is area bounded by the curve x square is equal to ky k greater than 0 and the line y equal to 3 is 12 square unit that k is. So the curve is x square is equal to ky. If one variable is of second degree and the other variable is of first degree, then it represents a parabola. So, x square is equal to means it's a parabola symmetrical along x axis. Sorry, x symmetrical along y axis. If y square is equal to 4ay, then the parabola is symmetrical along x axis. Here the second degree variable is x, so the parabola is symmetrical along y axis. And y equal to 3. y equal to 3 is a line parallel to x axis passing through 3. So this point is 0. So we have to find this area.
So here the limit, we can take the y limit. In the parabola of symmetrical, find the area in the first quadrant and multiply it by 2. Therefore, the required area is equal to 2 into integral. We are taking the y limit. So y varies from 0 to 3. Since the limits are of y, we have to find the function in terms of So x square is equal to k y means x is equal to root of k y. So 2 into integral 0 to 3 root of k y. Here we choose the limits of y. That's why we find the function in terms of y. This x equal to root of k y is a function in y. In integrating this 2 into root k is a constant. Root k integral 0 to 3 root y. Integral of root y is integral of y raised to 1 by 2. Integral of y raised to 1 by 2 is y raised to 1 by 2 plus 1. That is 3 by 2 by 3 by 2 within the limits 0 to 3. The area is equal to 12 square limit. So, this go, 2 goes to the numerator. So, 2 into 2 is 4 by 3 root k. And applying the upper limit. 3 cube, 3 raised to 3 by 2. That means 3 cube is 27, root of 27. Root 27 minus 0 raised to 3 by 2 is 0, which is equal to 12. In fact, this 4 and 12 is 1, 3. So, implies root k into root of 27 is 3 root 3 is equal to 9. Root k is equal to 9 by 3 root 3 is equal to 3 by root 3. Root k is equal to 3 by root 3 or k is equal to on scoring both sides 3 and 9 by which is equal to three. the correct option is option A, 3, 3 square units. So, K is equal, sorry, 3 units. K equal to 3. So, this is to find the value of K. So, K is 3. The area is given as 12, but according to the diagram, we can directly write the area as 2 into integral of 0 to 3. The limits is of Y. So, 0 to 3 functions also in terms of Y, that is root KY dy. Limits of wider arm of function wider than the air cannot. Limit is from 0 to 3 root of ky dy. Root k is a constant, so you can take it outside. 2, 2 into root k into integral 0 to 3 root y dy. Which is equal to 2 into root k into integral of y raised to 1 by 2 is y raised to 3 by 2 by 3 by 2 within the limit 0 to 3. Apply the upper limit, then the law limit. And solving this, you get root k as 3 by root 3 on square k is equal to 9 by 3, which is equal to 3. Option A. Next question. What's the domain of the function f of x is equal to 4 sin inverse x plus 1. Domain of the function f of x is equal to 4 sin inverse x plus 1. So, first take the force function, domain of force is force of sin inverse. So, you can consider the domain of sin inverse. Domain of sin inverse is minus 1 less than or equal to t, x less than or equal to 1. But here, in place of x, you have x plus 1. So, minus 1 less than or equal to x plus 1 less than or equal to 1. Minus 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 0. 
it varies from minus 2 to 0 so minus 2 closed interval minus 2 say. Domain of sin inverse is minus 1, 1. But here in place of x, you have x plus 1. So minus 1 less than or equal to x plus 1 less than or equal to 1. So minus 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 0. The domain is minus 2, comma 0. Now, next question. If the area of a triangle with vertices minus 3, 0, 3, 0, and 0, k is 9 square units, then what is the value of k? We already know that the area of a triangle is defined as area of triangle is equal to half into determinant of x1, y1, and x2, y2, 1. One by one, x2, y2, and x3, y3 are the three vertices of the triangle. So here area is given as 9. So 9 is equal to 1 by 2 into minus 2, 0, 1, 3, 0, 1, 0, k. So bring this 2 to the LHS. Now 9 into 2 is 18. 18 is equal to determinant of this value. Determinant value is minus 3 into 0 minus k minus 0 into comma 0 plus 1 into 3k. 18 is equal to 3k plus 3k. k is equal to 18 or k is equal to 16 by 18 by 6. So next business, a complete random variable x uh, has the probability density function f of x equal to e raised to minus x, 0 less than x less than infinity, then p of x greater than 1 is. Option A 1 by e, option B e, option C 1 and option D data insufficient. So now, probability of x greater than 1 is defined as probability of x greater than x is defined as integral of x to infinity f of x dx. You can apply this property here. So probability of x greater than 1 is defined as integral of 1 to infinity f of x. f of x is e raised to minus x dx. So, integral of e raised to minus x is e raised to minus x by minus 1 is 1 to infinity. So, now apply the upper limit and lower limit. e raised to minus infinity by minus 1 raised to minus 1 by is equal to minus 1 by e raised to infinity plus 1 by e. 1 by e raised to minus 1 by e raised to infinity 0 plus 1 by e. So the answer is 1 by e.
question, 29th question. So discrete random variable. Discrete random variable means the random variable take discrete values that is 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Continuous means it takes the values of all the values in an interval. So this is discrete random variable has the probability function as given below. The value of expectation of x. Expectation of x means the mean of x. Mean of that random variable is 97 by 26, 107 by 26, 93 by 26, 103 by 26. So before that, f of x is given in terms of k. So first you have to find the value of k. So now that f of x knows the probability of this random variable. So sum of all the probabilities, probabilities will always be equal to 1. So sigma of f of x is equal to 1. That is k plus 2k plus 3k plus 5k plus 5k plus 4k plus 3k plus 2k plus k is equal to 1. So, number k plus 2k is 3k, 3k plus 3k is 6k, 6k plus 5k is 11k, 11k plus 5k is 16k, 16k plus 4k is 20k, 20 plus 3 is 23, 23 plus 2 is 25, 25 plus 1 is 26. That is 26, k is equal to 1. So, k is equal to 1 by 26. The answer is 1 by 20. Sorry, k is 1 by 2. The value of k is 1 by 26. But the question is to find the expectation of x. So, expectation of x is defined as sigma x into multiply each x with the corresponding f of x then take this sign. That is 0 into k plus 3 into 2k plus 2 into 3k plus 4 into sorry 3 into 5k plus 4 into 5k plus 5 into 4k plus 6 into 3k plus 7 into 2k plus 8 into k. 0 into k is 0 plus 2k plus 6k plus 15k plus 20k plus 20k plus 18k plus 40k plus 8k which is equal to k plus 6k is 8k, 8k plus 15k is 23k, 23k plus 20k is 43k, 43 plus 20k is 63k, 63 plus 18k is 81k, 81k plus 14k is 95k, 95 plus 8k is 103k, so 1 now substitute the value of k, 103 into 1 by 26. So, this is equal to 103 by 26. Option B. B is the correct answer. So, here in the question, the purpose is given in terms of k. So, first we have to find that k. F of x is also probability. Sum of the probabilities will always be equal to 1. So, sum of these f of x is equal to 1. From that, you will get k as 1 by 26. Now, expectation of x is defined as sigma x into f of x. Expectation of x means mean. Now, variance sigma square is defined as expectation of x square minus expectation of x the whole square. Remember this point also. One square. So that is variance is equal to expectation of x square minus expectation of x square. Expectation of x square means sigma into x square into f of x minus sigma x into f of x the whole square. But here the question is to find your expectation of x and the answer is 1 of 3 by 26. And the correct option is option B.
Next is question, 13th question. The continuous random variable x has uncountable many values in the interval cost a, b. If c is a value in the interval cost a, b, then p of x equal to c. Option A is 0, is to E non zero. Option C depends on the limits A, B is less than 1, but not 0. But no, wait. So the continuous random variable has uncountably many values in the interval A, B. And P is the value in the interval post A, B, and you are asked to find the probability at a point. So, the variable is a continuous random variable and the question is to find the probability at a point. The variable is continuous and if you are asked to find the probability at a point, then it is always zero. So, the correct option is option A, that is probability of x equal to C is zero. Here the variable is continuous. But the question is to find the probability at a point. The variable is continuous and the, uh, the probability at a point is equal to C. Answer is option E. So now, next question, 31st question. M is the square matrix of order N and its determinant value is 5. All the elements of M are multiplied by 2. Its determinant value becomes 40. Then the value of N is option A 2, option B 3, option C 5 and option D 4. M is of order N, that is N by N. The determinant of M is equal to 5. Your question is to find the determinant value. Sorry, value of N is the determinant of 2. M is, every element of M is multiplied by 2 means the new matrix is 2. So, determinant 2 of us 40, not to find A. So, that is the property that if A is the order N by N, then determinant of KA is equal to K raised to N into determinant A. So, applying that property, determinant of 2 of us equal to 2 raised to N, determinant M is equal to 40. But determinant N, M is 5 is equal to 40 implies 2 raised to n is equal to 40 by 5, which is equal to 8. 2 raised to n is equal to 8. 2 cube is actually 8. So, 2 raised to n is equal to 2 cube. So, n is equal to option B. Next question, the points 5 minus 2, 8 minus 3 and A minus 2 are 12 are collinear if the value of A is option A 31, option B 32, option C 34 and option D 35. So, if 3 points are collinear, then they will not form a triangle. So, the area of triangle is equal to 0. Then the collinear points cannot form a triangle. Then write the area of collinear points as 0. So 
So area of triangle is equal to half into x1, y1, 1, x2, y2, 1, x3, y3, 1, which is equal to 0 when the points are collinear. Yeah? All the three points are collinear. It is given in the question. So we can equate the area equal to area to 0. Because determinant of x1, y1, 1, x2, y2, 1, x3, y3, 1 is equal to 0. Minus 5, minus 2, 1, 8, minus 6, 1, 8, minus 12, 1, is equal to 0. 5 into minus 3, minus, minus 12, minus 2 into 8 minus 8, plus 1 into minus 96, plus 3a equal to 0. What happened to the determinant is 5 into minus 3 plus 12 minus 2 into, sorry, minus minus 2. So plus 2 into plus 2 into 8 minus a plus 1 into minus 96 plus 3a is equal to 0. So minus 3 is 9, 9 into 5 is 45, plus 16 minus 2a minus 96 plus 3a is equal to 0. 3a minus 2a is a, 45 plus 16 is 61, 61 minus 96 is 35. So minus 35. A minus 35 is equal to 0. Plus A is equal to 33rd, 33rd question. The matrix A is such that C A Q plus 2 A square plus 5 A plus I equal to 0. Then what is A inverse equal to? You have to find A inverse. Here, the equation satisfied the matrix A is given as 3A cube plus 2A square plus 5A plus I is equal to 0. So, to find A inverse, multiply, that is pre multiplication, we are doing pre multiplication by A inverse. So, 3 into A inverse into A cube plus 2 into A inverse into A square plus 5 into A inverse into A plus 1. A inverse into I is equal to 0 into A inverse of 0. Multiply toward with A inverse. 3 into A inverse into A cube is A square plus 2 into A inverse into A square is A plus 5 into A inverse into A is I plus A inverse into I is A inverse equal to 0. So A inverse equal to minus 3A square minus 2A minus 5I equal to minus of 3a square plus 2a plus 5i. So a inverse is equal to minus 3a square plus 2a plus 5i. Option A. The answer is option A. Minus of 3a square plus 2a plus 5i. Sorry. Correct answer is option Option A is wrong because with 5 there is no the identity matrix. A, in, A inverse into A is identity matrix. So, uh, writing 5i as 5 is wrong. So, this is A is the not 
A is not the correct answer. Correct answer is option D. Because A inverse of A is I. So 5 into A inverse of A, A gives 5I. It's not 5, just 5I. So minus of 3A square plus 2A plus 5. The next question. Then if A into B transform is defined as a square matrix, then what is the order of the matrix B? Where matrix A has the order of 2 byte. Option A 3 by 3, option B 2 by 3, option C 3 by 2, and option D 4 by 2. Here A is of order 2 by 3 and A B transposes a square matrix. You know that the product of two matrices are only possible if A is of order 2 by 3 then B transpose must be of order 3 by some n. But given that the result is a square matrix. So this n should be equal to 2. So B transpose, order of B transpose is 3 by Order of B transpose is 3 by 2, then order of B is 2 by 2. The correct answer is option B, 2 by 2. A is of order 2 by 3, but the product A, B transpose is possible. So, if the product is possible only if B, uh, order of B transpose is of the form 3 cross N. So, B transpose is of order 3 cross 2 because the result is that square matrix. So, B transpose is equal to 3, 3 by 2. So, order of B is equal to 2 by 2. B transpose means matrix obtained by interchanging rows and columns. Now, next question, area bounded by the curves, mod y equal to 1 minus x square. Option A, 4 by 3 square units, option B, 8 by 3 square units, option C, 4 square units and option D, 16 by 3 square units. So, mod y equal to 1 minus y, x square means y is equal to 1 minus x square and x greater than 0 and it is equal to minus of 1 minus x square. This is also a parabola but since there are two functions, then only a parabola divided between uh, two quartiles but since there are two functions parabola is divided in four quartiles so area is equal to four into integral of this function one minus x square and the limit is from zero to this four into x minus integral of x square is 2 by 3 the limit 0 to 1 4 into 1 minus 1 by 3 is equal to 4 into 2 by 3 is equal to 8 by 3 square option b is the correct answer so here this is a parabola because one variable is in second degree and the other is one, uh, first degree but y is equal to, so since the modulus function, you can write y is equal to 1 minus x square and minus of 1 minus x square. One parabola is divided between two quartiles, but here are two parabolas, therefore total four quartiles. All are symmetrical, so find the area in one first quartile and multiply it with 4. The limit is from 0 to 1 because the parabola cuts the x-axis at 0 and 1. If you draw the diagram, you can see that the parabola cuts at 0 and 1. Integral 0 to 1, 1 minus x square dx. 4 into integral of x is 
sorry, integral of 1 minus x and integral of x square is x square by 3 within the limit 0 to 1. x square into, I'm applying the upper limit, 1 minus 1 cube by 3 is 1 by 3 minus 0 is equal to 4 into 1 minus 1 by 3 is 2 by 3. 4 into 2 by 3 is 8 by 3 square root. We can wind up the section.